Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to talk about the MFJ939 tuner. This was my first tuner, lots of good memories. Outside of the MFJ849 meter at the top, this was my original ham shack. This was my first radio, the FT891, and this was the first tuner when I got tired and frustrated of using the manual tuner. This is the MFJ939, specifically the MFJ939Y model, which means it comes with a special fancy cable. And that special fancy cable enables us to go into the menu system on this radio. And we need to scroll down to 1615, tuner select, and we need to choose external. There's a couple of choices here. ATAS, which is that fancy screwdriver antenna they have. Linear amplifier or lamp, which means use the tuner that's built into your amplifier and the, the send ALC key on the back. Uh, you can turn it off or you can set it to external, which I have it set to external. One of the things that I liked best about this tuner is that it plugs directly into the back of the 891 and doesn't require any external power. So you can see the power light on and it's powered up because of being connected to the radio. So we turn it off, it blinks, and you don't see any life or hear anything coming out of it. So with this on and with this on, you heard it all click in. I'll show you how it's wired in when we get some better lighting, but I've got the lighting turned down low because of the bright display on the 891 would wash out the camera. I want you guys to be able to see what's going on here. So what I've got, I've got my DX Commander hooked up. It is the DX Commander Classic, which does not have the 80 meter band. And so I'm gonna switch over to 80 meters now. Okay, let's do it the old fashioned way. I'll turn the tuner off, which opens up the relays. And now if you look, we've got 65 to 1 SWR, and the radio is complaining of high SWR. So I'm not going to run the radio too much. I don't want to burn out my finals, but I did want to show you that the SWR is off the charts. So let's turn it on, and then let's hit the tune button here, and you just hold it in for a little bit. And now it's in tune. It was already tuned up on this frequency, as you saw when I started the test out, and this tuner has memory, so you didn't hear it click or anything. The memories in here are fantastic. You can run through three different antennas by picking the Alt button here. If you hold it down, it'll beep once for antenna one, twice for antenna two, three times for antenna three, etc. And that's a good way to do it. Now let's get out of the way of where we were tuned and go to somewhere where we are not tuned. And you can hear that there's nobody there. So if I press and hold the tune button, there it is, 1.84 to 1 SWR, and you can see it here on the SWR meter as well. And sometimes you can tune it more than once and get a better tune on it. But 1.5, 1.58, not bad at all. Let's go down low in the band, somewhere else. And let's do, and it just tunes right up 1.5 to one SWR. And so that's one of the cool things about this. With or without the cable plugged in, this thing will automatically go into tune if it senses the RF is way out of whack, if it senses the SWR is way out of whack. So that's a fantastic feature of this. This tuner button here built into the radio it is a tad finicky at times, so it's telling me that it's got high SWR, which is true, and sometimes this tuner does that. So you gotta try again, and if the second time it complains, what I'll do is I'll go off frequency where there isn't anybody, I'll change it over to a carrier mode like RIDI or CW or AM, and then I'll just key down on the microphone. There we go, 1.5, 1.63 to 1. 1.46. There we go, 1.24. Okay, so here is the backside of the FD891. The cable that comes with the 939Y is an eight pin connector and it fits into the eight pin port. There's only one port that it can fit into. This one is a six pin port and you could try really hard and have a bad day as a result of that. I'm gonna plug that in and then you take the coax coming out of the radio and it goes into the coax marked transmitter. You can see transmitter ground and antenna right there. And then the other end of that eight pin cable here goes into the RJ45 interface. And because you have it configured as external here, 
you don't need to use the barrel jack. The tuner does come with a barrel jack and you can run it just fine with the barrel jack. Now you knew there wasn't going to be any chance that we weren't going to get inside of this. So I'm going to take my Kyrie's toolkit and get this thing opened up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws to get into this thing. This thing is definitely not accidentally coming apart in the field. Inside, what do we have here? As you can imagine on most tuners, you're going to have a bunch of capacitors and you're going to have a bunch of inductors. A microprocessor somewhere in here is going to be the thing that determines, you know, I've got high SWR, which you can see right here. There is an SWR measurement bridge. When it sees that high SWR, it will start doing some, some math and some funny calculations and whatnot to swap in different variables of capacitors and different variables of inductance until it finds a good match. And that's kind of that agricultural, I call it the tractor sound, the agricultural sound that you get is each of these relays switching on and off relatively fast. Since it doesn't say anywhere on the data sheet or anywhere in any of the product literature or anywhere on the internet, I'm going to assume that these are regular non-latching relays and therefore they will this thing will always need to be powered in order for the relays to be in place and do their thing because otherwise they would brag about it all day long how does the construction look on something like this these are all surface mount components this is a custom pcb this is the mfj 925 927 928 929 circuit board and then there is a control board on the front aha there is also it's buried behind here, but there is also a chip here, which is probably the program. And then right here is a set of jumpers where you can jumper this over for a variety of different radios. Okay, let's get it all put back together. Tore the whole thing apart, looked inside. It looks like an auto tuner. It, it, it really does, because that's what it is. And I really had a lot of years of enjoyment with this tuner. I have used this on my FT891, my IC706, my IC7300, and a couple of other radios that have come and gone over the years of being in the ham shack here. It has always been reliable. I think the finickiness with the FT891, there's a couple of other people that have had the same type of situation. I think it's a Yezu problem, air quotes, problem, because it's not really a problem. What's happening in my mind, the Yezu FT891 has a fold back circuit if the SWR is too high and it folds back before the tuner can kick in and tune and fix it. And if you just hold down the tune button, it goes, nope, <laughs> ain't happening. But if you hold down a transmit carrier, then it will tune just fine. And that's where the tuner comes in and starts its protection. And there's something in the timing there. You can go into the FT891 and turn the power down which is really a pain in the butt on the FT891. And it will probably tune just fine at like five watts. And then you can tune it up one more time after that when you get it back up to full power. That's too much work. Change modes, carrier mode, key down, it tunes up just fine. If you're running FT8 with this thing, it will automatically sense that it's out of tune and it will tune just fine. This tunes all the HF frequencies, 160 meters through 10 meters. I have tried to run this on six meters. It confuses itself. It will try to tune, get a lock, and then a couple of seconds later, it won't have a lock anymore. It's not designed for six meters. I'm asking too much of it. It's just me. I like to push the limits of things sometimes. Would I recommend this tuner? Yes. With the caveat on the FT891, I think it's an FT891 thing. It might be a high power thing. It's probably gonna work the same way on every other radio as well. I will not hold it against this. How's the construction? Everybody always asks about MFJ construction. I'd say you saw it on the bench. The construction's fantastic. This was probably assembled 99% in a PCB fab shop. And then the last couple of parts were put on inside of MFJ at, at the house there in Mississippi. One thing that I will say, MFJ gets a bad rap. MFJ has what we call a tax surface in the security industry. They have about a million and a half products out and they sell hundreds of thousands of volumes of those products. And as a result, there's gonna be some things. If you want something for ham radio, if you want an accessory for ham radio, you can find it on MFJ's website. MFJ has fantastic customer service. If you are unhappy with it, they will take care of you for it. No problem there. Where else are you gonna get that kind of stuff? That's what I like about MFJ. I called when I first got this and I was a new ham because it was doing some things that were weird and they told me how to fix it. I, I got no complaints at all, not a one. So 
There are plenty of other auto tuners out there besides this one. There will be a link to this auto tuner in the description down below where you can get one. It does come with the patch cable for the Yezu on the 939Y model. Uh, but you can also get a patch cable for ICOM. You can change the jumpers inside or you can just use it and it will do what we call RF sense and it'll get the job done. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.